Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Pottsville, Arkansas, where tonight you'll be seeing the Prairie Grove Lady Tigers playing the Ozark Lady Hillbillies for a regional championship. I'm Derek Dugan. Along with me tonight is Dr. Williams, our superintendent at school. And, Dr. Williams, this sets up to be a really good game, don't you think? I think so. Of course, Ozark was in our conference last year, and we got to see them several times. And We were just talking before coming on the air. I think we uh, – split during the regular season. They beat us at their place. We beat them at home. And then uh, on that uh, nice district tournament championship we had last year, I think we beat them in Farmington on back-to-back -back nights to win that championship. Well, this – we kind of were, were talking – I was talking with Lynn Gregson, who's out of town this weekend. Uh, we were talking about a lot of times you're, fam you're not familiar with teams when you come down to a regional tournament play but it's kind of a unique situation with Ozark, as you mentioned, being in our conference the past few years. Uh, we've gotten to know them real well. They've gotten to know us real well. So the familiarity is pretty, uh, it's pretty high level here. We kind of uh, know what we're getting with them. They've got some solid players back that we'll get into. And uh, we've got a, a young team with a few new fresh faces that maybe Ozark is not accustomed to, but I'm sure Ozark's got a few new ones as well. Right. I, you know, several of our – our kids that are playing this year had to play last year as uh, sophomores, and uh, and so they're they're going to know what we have for the most part, and and I think we're going to know most of their players as well. And uh, uh, two good teams, but they they go about it different ways. Ozark's got plenty of size. Uh, also have uh, at least uh, last year one guard I know that was very good, yeah. and I think they've got a couple others that can play out there. And, and of course we uh, much smaller, so we we have to move the ball around a lot to get open shots. Uh, but our girls are tough. They'll get in there and box out and then play with the big girls as well. And Lynn and I have talked all year about uh, our girls are a little bit undersized this year. I think Coach Froud is looking for opportunities to push the tempo in transition. Uh, may see some full court press. Now I don't know if we'll see that tonight with, as you mentioned, the the real good guard from Ozark. Uh, but I think this will be a real contrast in styles, as you mentioned, that Ozark probably wants to see a little bit of, of a slower tempo game, whereas I would think the Lady Tigers are going to have more success the more they're able to turn this into a transition fast break type game. I, I think that's a good point, and, and our girls will come out and play defense, and we've got some girls that are quick enough to really cause some problems for the opposing team's point guard. Well, earlier tonight, uh, the, the consolation games, of course, with the weather coming in Friday and Saturday, uh, tonight's games were supposed to be played Saturday, so they moved everything back to tonight. Uh, the Huntsville Lady Eagles played in the consolation uh, game against Pottsville. I don't know if you got down in time for, to see that one. I know Huntsville won, uh, so Huntsville will be the three seed at State this coming week. Uh, Pottsville, uh, their girls will be the four seed. And then on the boys' side, we just got finished watching the Huntsville uh, boys' team. Uh, fall to the Arkansas Baptist team uh, by about 10 points, I think. I'm not sure what the final was. but So Huntsville will be the four seed, uh, the only representative from our conference on the boys' side, but they'll be the four seed. They've got a spot down at the state tournament. And then uh, tonight with the, the Lady Tigers, you've got two conference champions uh, right here. Ozark won their conference. I don't actually think they lost a game in their conference. Do you know I th that? I think that's correct. I, I think, think they went through it undefeated. So you're seeing the, the two best at least uh, – uh, we were co-conference champions, I guess, with Huntsville, but district champions, and then Ozark were, was district champions as well. So it ought to be a great matchup tonight. We're getting ready for the starting lineups here. Well, barring any snow, I think uh, the winner <laughs> plays Friday at 4 and the, the loser will play Thursday at 1. Yes, so. yes, I, I think that's right. The Lady Tigers are going to be the home team. Both teams are the one seed coming into the tournament, uh, but the Lady Tigers, we're on the top of the bracket, so the top of the bracket will be the home team. So the Lady Tigers will be wearing their white jerseys tonight. Ozark 
be wearing their purple. Starting lineups for Ozark, that's number one, Katie Schaefer. She's a senior. Number five is Celia Heffington. She's also a senior for Ozark. And here's the player to watch for Ozark, Kylie Ladd. She's a senior as well. Talking to Coach Froud earlier this afternoon, she's a commitment to Arkansas State. She's going to play ball there next year. Number 14 is Brooklyn Ree, also a senior. And then number 44 is Olivia Melton. So Dr. Williams, not only a, a contrast in styles, but uh, five seniors five. for the Ozark Lady Hillbillies. The Lady Tigers do not have any seniors on their roster, as we mentioned. Right. Starting lineups for the Lady Tigers. That's number three, Parker Lopez, sophomore. Also a sophomore, number 20, Camry Bartholomew. Number 21, junior, Taylor Harton. And her twin sister, number 23, also a junior, Maddie Harton. When Maddie's been playing really solid down here at the regional tournament. Number 33, the fifth starter, the post player for the Lady Tigers. Ashley Cox, she's also a junior. She will have her hands full with the size of Ozark, but Ashley, Dr. Williams, just does a great job of finding a way to use the, the lack of size that she has. She really gets around the ball, makes a lot of uh, defensive rebounds, gets a lot of baskets around the rim there, just on loose balls and just flat out hustle, I think. Right, very athletic, and usually is a little quicker than the, uh, the girl that she's guarding. Ozark with a pretty good contingency over here. I think we're surrounded. We're on the Ozark side, I think. <laughs> Ozark's going to get the tip, and this is number 10, Kylie Ladd, as the Lady Tigers start out in their man-to-man -man defense. Well, there's a good entry pass inside to Heffington, number five. That dribble penetration set that up. Two-nothing Lady Hillbillies. Camry Bartholomew, the Lady Tigers do push the ball back down quickly. Now we've got a jump ball. Tied up there by Schaefer. Lady Tigers are going to retain possession. And Ozark comes out in man-to-man -man defense as well. Lopez with the ball on the wing. Maddie Harton trying to dribble inside, make something happen. Now kick out to Taylor Harton. She drives the baseline. Nothing going, number 20, Bartholomew, uh -huh. there's a three ball. Boy, she picked up right where she's left off the last few, probably month of the season. It is, and I think it's good for us to get off to, to a good start here. Uh, Ozark really got out in front early on Huntsville and took them out of the game. Yeah, you bring up a good point. I think they were up by about 25 points on Huntsville. I was listening to that one on the radio. I think they 33 to 8 is the way wow. that game started, and then Huntsville came back and made it more of a game later on. That foul was on Parker Lopez, I think. Yes, exactly right. Parker's first foul, first foul of the game, and that's number 44, Melton, at the free throw line. She hits the first free throw. Ties the ball game up at three. The second shot is on the way, and it's good as well. Ozark leads it four to three with seven minutes to play in the first quarter. Now we've got, I thought they were almost going to go to a 1-3-1, but they've just extended out that man defense a little bit. And there's Lopez trying to drive it inside. She throws it back court. Lady Tigers are going to commit the turnover there. Just got in a little bit of a hurry there. Settle down as the game goes on. Well, there's Ladd taking it all the way to the basket. She lays it up off the glass and good, and Ozark's got a 6-3 lead. Lady Tigers pushing the ball right back at him. One thing about our team, Dr. Williams, that I've noticed is we don't get rattled. We're a young team, but we've had chances this year where we've been behind a little bit. Even I think about the district tournament there against Berryville over at Shiloh. We just never got rattled, played really composed basketball. And, and they're going to call a foul right there as Maddie Harton tries to drive it inside. Call that foul number one, Katie Schaefer. That's her first foul, first foul for Ozark. 
I think you made a good point. Our girls have always kept their composure, and they're going to keep playing hard all four quarters. Bartholomew at the top of the key now gets it to Lopez. and A lot of room. They're backing off Lopez there. Kind of going to a four low and letting her drive. And Couldn't oh. get it to go. There's Ashley Cox with the offensive rebound and the stick back right there. Cuts the lead six to five now with 5.45 to play. Good position by Ashley. She had a couple critical baskets in the last ball game doing the same thing. There's Melton steps out for about an 18-footer. No good. They're going to get Ozark on the over the back there. That's going to be the second foul on number one, Katie Schaefer. So she's going to come out of the ball game. She's replaced by number 13, Lexi McClellan, a sophomore for Ozark. Kind of a trademark for Prairie Groves. We will box out. And you're going to have yes. to go through us to get the rebound. There's Lopez again driving in on that left side, which she really likes. She loses control of it and it goes out of bounds here. And here come the Lady Tigers with a little full court pressure. They get it into Ladd and now the Lady Tigers back off a little bit. Try to keep Ladd in front of you. That's a hard job to do. She's going to be fouled. It may be a second foul on Parker yeah, Lopez. Yeah, you're right. I think they got Parker on that one. So now Lady Tigers and the Lady Hillbillies both with the starter with two fouls as Ladd will go to the free throw line for Ozark to shoot two. First one rattles around, falls out. Number 24, Sarah James Stone, the freshman, is coming in for the Lady Tigers. She replaces Parker. Second free throw is up and good. Something a little different in Ladd's game. She seems to be driving it into the paint a lot, where last year it seemed like she shot more from the outside. Yeah, we've had a little bit of trouble here in the early going, keeping her in front of us a little bit. Lady Hillbillies lead is 7-5 to five with five minutes left in the first quarter. Lady Tigers running a little three-man weave on the perimeter here, as Coach Froud likes to do. Time Camry made a nice job to come to the basketball as Maddie had gotten herself in a little bit of trouble. And there's Hart and driving to the left side just a little bit too strong. Heffington rebounds for Ozark, and here come the Lady Hillbillies. Got the shot we wanted, just didn't, didn't convert. And they're going to call a foul, I believe, on Ashley Cox there. As Ladd tried to lob the ball inside, that's going to be Ashley's first foul. Third foul on the Lady Tigers. Can't remember if you got it in or not, but uh, Sarah James Stone came in for uh, Parker Lopez. Ladd a little bit short on that deep. That was a deep three-point shot she took, and Lady Tigers get the rebound. Now Camry stuck a little bit. At, ball's knocked away, and Ladd comes away with it. Well, they had a two-on-one opportunity. Couldn't control the ball there. Nice job for the Lady Tigers getting back. Ladd drives it inside again, and that time she gets the foul and the basket. Well, you're right, Dr. Williams. Ladd is really aggressive right here in the early going, going to the basket. Taylor Doss checks in for the Lady Tigers. She's going to replace Bartholomew, they got that foul on Taylor Harton, so her first foul. And Kylie Ladd has got six of Ozark's ten points. And with four minutes to play in the quarter, Lady Hillbilly's up ten to five. Seems like Ozark's kind of jumping that, that handoff there, and they've caught us a couple times. Almost like a trap there. There's Taylor Harton driving to the basket. She's going to be fouled. And she'll go to the line and shoot two free throws. Good aggressive move right there by Taylor. Even with their size, we're going to keep, keep working until we can get a shot inside right now. Well, they call that foul on number four, but you know what? There's not a number four. On I think the, it was 44. They get 44. It's just on the scoreboard wrong, I guess. So Melton, if that's, if that's correct, that's her first foul as Taylor hits both free throws. Lady Tigers two out of two at the free throw line. 10 to seven now. 
Boy, Ree goes in strong as nice, she comes oh, up. Nice rebound by Sarah James, but it got stolen. There we go. Get it, girls. Good hustle by both teams right there. Ashley Cox on the floor, along with Brooklyn Ree for Ozark. And Coach Froud going to call his first time out of the ball game as Ozark's going to retain possession on the on the jump ball. We had two chances to get that, that rebound there, Dr. Williams. W weren't able to come away with it clean. Well, that Ozark team, they're senior laden and they're pretty crafty and we got the rebound and uh, I don't know if she didn't realize the girl was right behind her, but she stuck her hand in there and poked it out and uh, you just got to be very strong with the ball when you're playing this team. That was a 30-second timeout for the Lady Tigers. First timeout taken in the ball game. But you can tell these are two well-coached teams, and they both are, are scrapping and playing hard. And I'm not sure. I think, I think they've got a super six now is the way the polls are, and I'm not sure what Ozark is, but I would imagine it's, it's in the top two or three in the state, if not – the top of the state in the 4A classification. There's a nice steal by Taylor Doss, and the Lady Tigers get the ball right back. One of the things Lynn and I have talked about, Dr. Williams, is that three ball has been so key for us this year. And there's right on cue oh. almost. Taylor gets the shot. No good, and rebound is Goes to Ree for Ozark. Lady Hillbilly is really pushing the ball here. There's a three-point shot from the wing. No good. And they're going to call foul. Uh -huh. I think they're going to get Ozark on that. So the Lady Tigers are going to get the ball back. It's on 14, uh, Brooklyn Ree. Ree, that's her first foul. The Ozarks, Lady Hillbilly is their fourth team foul. So both, both teams racking up some fouls here in the early going. There's Maddie driving inside, lays it oh. off the glass and good. That's Maddie's first basket of the game and her first points cuts the lead to one with two and a half minutes to play. Boy, there's Ladd again. Getting inside, she gets her own rebound, throws it up, no good, gets her rebound again. And now Ozark's gonna settle it inside. We she is really going to press the defense. If you don't get good position, she's gonna take it as far into the paint as she can. She sure has, here she goes again. That time, Taylor did a nice job getting out on her. There's Ree from the top of the key, and that's the Ozark first three of the ball game. Extends the lead back up to four with two minutes to play in the first quarter. Maddie drives the baseline, kicks it back out. Taylor Doss has got it. Now Harton's open on the wing. There it is. That's nice. Another three-point shot for the Lady Tigers. Taylor Hart in her first three ball of the game. That's five points for her, and the lead is back down to one. Good to see her with some points in the first quarter. Uh, she's played very well in the point guard spot, but really hadn't scored a whole lot during, during this tournament. Well, after the three-point make, the Lady Tigers press in the full court. Ozark gets past it. Ladd once again goes to the basket. Not sure who they call that foul on, Dr. Williams. They, they've got it on the scoreboard as Parker Lopez, but she's not even in the game, so hopefully they don't give her that foul. Somebody <laughs> that would needs be her to let, third. Uh, I, I, think it, I think they called it on Ashley Cox, 33. Could be 33, or I guess it could we be 23. We also had 23 in as well, but I, I hope somebody catches and yes, make sure the official yes. book has that right. Ladd misses her first free throw, gets the second one to go. She's got seven points, half of Ozark's points. The minute and a half to play in the first quarter, Lady Hillbilly's up by two. Well, you may be right. That may be on Ashley because she's out of the game now. That could be her second foul. Lady Tigers running motion offense here as Maddie Harton's got the ball at the top of the key. She drives it inside. She's doing a good job of being aggressive, and she draws a foul. That foul is going to be on double zero. Hannah Ladd, who has checked into the game, freshman for Ozark. I would assume the younger sister to number 10, Kylie Ladd. And now Lady Tigers having a tough time getting the ball inbounded. 
knocked around. I think we kicked it off of our foot there as Ozark got a hand on it. Ozark's going to get the ball back. And here comes Ladd in the full court again. Time the Lady Tigers do a good job of stepping in front and stopping the dribble. And here she goes on the baseline, pull up jumper, 15 footer, no good. Knocked out of bounds, Lady Tigers are going to get it. That's, they've missed a few shots, Dr. Williams. We've not been able to come up with the clean rebounds that we're used to coming up with. Yes, they're, they're very aggressive on the boards, and they're getting their hands on the ball and uh, uh, doing a good job with that. I, I'm impressed with how Lads improved her game. Like I say, last year I thought she was mostly an outside player, but this year she's really, really doing well. There's a nice play there as Maddie gets inside to Sarah James. She couldn't come up with a basket there, rebounded by Heffington. It's a good offensive look again for the Lady Tigers. Now with 29 seconds, Ozark may be content to just run for one shot here. Ree's got the ball and now gives it to the younger lad. Thrown over to Ree in the corner, now back out to Hannah Ladd at the top of the key with nine seconds to play in the first quarter. Here comes Ladd with a crossover move. Pull-up jumper is no good. She gets her own rebound. No good again. Oh, goodness oh, gracious. Oh, with .2 seconds. With .2 seconds left. She got three opportunities right there. She draws the foul. Maddie Harton with her first foul. And boy, you hate to see that with .2 seconds left. Hannah Ladd is going to get to go to the line and shoot two here to end the quarter. She gets the first one to go. Dr. Williams, I, they're four out of eight, no, six out of eight at the free throw line. Ozark's gotten there a lot this first quarter. And she gets the second one to go. Lady Tigers won't be able to get a shot off in time. So at the end of the first quarter, your score, Ozark 16, Lady Tigers 12. We're going to go to a commercial. We'll be right back after the break. If you're looking for America's most dependable, long-running, full-size truck, then you're looking for the Chevy Silverado. And you'll find a fantastic selection at Everett Chevrolet right off of I-49. But right now, they're excited about the totally redesigned Tahoe and Suburban. If you're looking to move your small team around, you can do it in style with Everett Chevrolet. And you'll also find two of America's favorite sports cars there, the Chevy Camaro and the Corvette Stingray. New or used, you'll find it a customer-friendly, family-owned Everett Chevrolet I-49 and Elm Springs Road in Springdale. The start of the second quarter, our East Lab students have come down once again to set everything up for us here. They've been with us all year, uh, making our jobs easy up here, at least for me anyway, I can say. And our East Lab students that came with us tonight, we've got Ben Lowe and Alex Henry on the camera work and Christian Dowdy producing for us tonight. Again, if you're watching from home, you can go to the comments page online and let us know how the broadcast is going. I don't really care for any feedback on, on the job that I'm doing, but as far as the camera work, the sound, just let us know if everything's coming through fine for you. As we start the second quarter here, Lady Hillbillies with a four-point lead. And here's the, what I call the quadruple ball screen. Well, that was a decoy, I guess, there as the kind Lady of Tigers a, kind of spread out there. Kind of a stack at the top of the key. There's a three ball from the corner. Maddie Hart, no good. Fight for the rebound there. Sarah James does a good job of keeping the ball alive. And unfortunate there, they're going to call the foul on Taylor Hart. And I believe that's going to be a one and one free throw now. And boy, that's a second foul on Taylor. And Ozark's going to be on the bonus for a long time for the rest of this half. And 25, Megan Reynolds checking in. Megan Reynolds into the game. We also have uh, Taylor Doss and Sarah James Stone in. Uh, just, just two of our starters from the beginning of the game. Well, the first of the one and one is up and good. I can't tell. Is that number 13 there? I believe that's correct. I think it is. 13. Lexi McClellan has checked in for Ozark. She's a sophomore as well. She hits both free throws. Ozark really making a living at the free throw line tonight. 
and they extend the lead to six. Lady Tigers push the ball quickly into the front court. Dangerous pass right there. Bartholomew comes away with it. I have to say, in the semifinal game, Megan Reynolds came in in the first half and really helped us out with four points and good defense. Rebounded well. Bartholomew no good, but Sarah James with the mm -hmm. offensive rebound. She's going to be fouled, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. I think they got number five, Heffington there. And Coach Froud, I think Dr. Williams will try to keep the, the girls with two fouls on the bench if at all possible. That, the games. That, that's been the way he's worked all, all season. Sarah James gets the second one to go. The lead is down to five with 7.13 to play in the half. Uh, Lady Hillbilly's doing a nice job against the full court pressure here. We've not really been able to get any uh, points off of turnovers. Ozark taking care of the basketball right now. Inside there to Melton, she misses, and that time a good rebound by Sarah James. Megan Reynolds thought about the three from the corner. Now she gets it to Bartholomew at the top of the key. It's like just a kind of a little four out motion offense here for the Lady Tigers as Camry lets one fly wow. from the wing and she gets her second three pointer of the game. Six points for Camry and the lead is back down to two. Sarah James Stone tipped that one out of bounds. I'll tell you, Camry Bartholomew, I think, uh, for sophomores, played well all year, but it seemed like about halfway through the conference season, her stroke from outside has just become deadly, and she's really hurt some teams. Yeah, you, you almost expect her to make it every time she shoots it. She's, she shot it so well the last few weeks, like you're saying. Here's Melton, spin move down to the baseline. Boy, <laughs> I don't know how she got that one to go, but... She did, four points for Melton, and lead is back up to four for Ozark with six minutes to play in the first half. She's got to take your hat off to her. We defensed that about as well as yeah. you could, and she still made the shot. The Lady Tigers right now playing with two starters on the floor, and that ball gets away from us. Ladd comes away with it. And there's a baseball pass down the court. Oh, a nice job by the Lady Tigers getting back there to stop the easy basket. That was a pretty good arm by Ladd. That was. He threw it about 60 feet there. It's Camry Bartholomew getting back to knock the ball out of bounds. Oh, oh nice, nice steal. steal. Here comes Maddie Harton into the front court. Now gets it over. To Bartholomew, comes back to the left side. She can't get it to go, but she's going to be fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line to shoot two shots. Foul is on double zero, Hannah Ladd, so that's her second foul for Ozark. And now both teams into the bonus. Right, might be a little difficult to press the tempo. With Looks like we're going to be shooting free throws quite a bit. Well, Camry off to a great start. Seven points for her in the ball game. Missed the second one. Second shot is no good, so the lead is three with 5.20 to play in the first half. Seems like we're doing a little better job here containing Ladd off the dribble. There's nice help oh. defense by Maddie Hart. Trying to throw the ball over Sarah James, and Maddie came in from behind and intercepted the pass. Great anticipation because that wasn't her girl there. Came all the way across. Five minutes to play in the first half. Now a 1-4 low set for the Lady Tigers. Harton comes in off the glass. Maddie with four points, and the lead is back down to one. Ladd gets it inside again. A contested shot uh -huh. that time. It's good defense. Sarah James with the rebound, and now Bartholomew really pushing it back at Ozark. Maddie Harton goes inside, swatted away by Heffington, but the Lady Tigers retain possession of it. 20-19, Ozark leads it with 4.15 to play in the first half. 
Maddie open for three from the wing, just a little bit too strong. Nice Back rebound. Boy, Sarah's really battling inside. She got the rebound, might have gotten pushed a little bit there, but fell down and got the walking call. Number one, Schaefer checks back into the game, and she's got two fouls. She's sat on the bench for a long time. She's back into the ball game for Ozark. I don't know if it's to give her a break or what, but they've had McClellan bringing the ball down some and had Ladd playing on the off guard. There's Ladd. Shot fake, then pulls up inside from about 18 feet and gets the jump shot to go. So nine points for Ladd. The lead is back up to three for Ozark. I think Coach Froud trying to really spread the defense out here and try to get some. It's Megan Reynolds. Reynolds. Oh, oh in and out, but nice, nice rebound. rebound. Oh. Just can't get it to go, but Sarah Jane's really battling inside as Ozark comes back. Melton, a little bit too strong. There's going to – over the back. Over the back. I think uh, Coach Proud was hollering for a foul down there on the shot by Sarah James and ends up getting an over the back on this end. And we're going to get free throws either way, I guess, as we'll go to the line. I'm not sure who is going to actually shoot the free throws. It looks like Camry's going to go to the line for a one-and-one. She's one out of two at the line tonight. Dr. Williams, Lynn Gregson, my usual partner, is watching from New York tonight. So I guess we're we're we've gone national now. We've gone national. <laughs> well, Lynn, don't give us too bad a critique if you send anything yeah. in. Just don't give us any critique. That'd be fine. <laughs> Eight points for Bartholomew. She gets both free throws to go. So nine points now for Camry. Lady Tigers just. Knocking on the door, taking this lead. 3.15 to play in the first half. Nice pass inside to Heffington. She's got four points. They've gotten that look a couple times, haven't they? They have, and sometimes they, they were able to press the defense and her help couldn't get over there. Uh, that's a tough matchup because yeah. she's got such a size advantage. Lead back up to three for Ozark. Lady Tigers going to pull it out here and run a set play. There's the quadruple ball screen there. Ozark does a nice job with it. Here comes Maddie Harton driving it inside. Now gets it back to Camry from the wing, a little bit too strong, and it's going to be out of bounds. Goes back to Ozark. Got a good look, just didn't go in. Comes the full court pressure again from the Lady Tigers. They get it into Ladd. Knocked away by oh. Taylor Doss. Taylor Doss playing nice defense on the ball. Schaefer's got it now. Set it up as Ozark really looking inside, trying to get it down low to Heffington. Oh, Melton comes back with oh. a long shot. Just a little bit short there, so the Lady Tigers will get it back. That kind of surprised me that she shot that. Yes, I don't don't think that's the look they were they were hoping for there, but she she's a good player. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. She I'm not used to seeing her shoot from out there. Well, we're at the two minute mark of the first half as Camry walks it up the court. I know Lynn will love that Camry's taking every bit of that ten seconds. That <laughs> he's always thought she's going to get a ten second violation doing that. The ball's knocked out of bounds there, but you know it looks like Maddie's kind of doing the same thing to Ozark that Ladd was doing us to us early in the game, just trying to drive inside and make things happen. We run that little weave a lot and, and hand the ball off, and we wait for defender to be about a half step slow and then make the cut to the basket. Ball's tipped away, but Maddie does a nice job of coming away with it. Ozark extending their defense with their guards a little bit. Here comes Maddie. She steps back for the three-point shot. Too strong. Melton with the rebound for Ozark. It's been good, Dr. Williams, that with three starters out of the game, we've been able to keep this thing close and not let it get away from us. Oh, my. That was a uh, lad. Looked like she had an open look to one of the big girls and kind of lost the handle on the ball. As she attacks again, and that time they're going to get Taylor Doss on, I believe, kind of a hand check there. So Ladd will go back to the free throw line to shoot a one and one. 
She's three out of five at the free throw line tonight. First one is good. She's got 10 points, the first player into double figures in the ball game. Second one is too strong. Rebound, Taylor Doss. One minute to play in the first half. Ozark leads it by four. Ball's knocked away, but Megan Reynolds comes away with it. Now over to Maddie Harton, who settles things down. Reynolds with it inside. The ball's knocked away there, so a good job of her keeping her composure. Now a pull-up jumper for Camry Bartholomew. No good, but she's going to get her own rebound. Lady Tigers with 25 seconds to play. May just want one shot here. Taylor Doss trying to drive it around. Yeah, Coach Froud wanting them to back it out here. Maybe last shot of the half. Here's Maddie Harton coming open on the baseline. And I guess she just took a – got a little bit ahead of herself, turns the ball over right there. So Ozark's going to get it back with eight seconds left. Boy, Ozark closed quick on that. I thought she was going to be more open than that on the baseline. Going to need to get somebody in front of Ladd. She's pressing the ball pretty hard here. Spin move back to the left side. Too strong by Melton. Tips it up and in as the buzzer goes off. And another offensive rebound for the Lady Hillbillies. As Melton's got six points in the ball game, and Ozark's got a six-point lead at the half, 27-21. Dr. Williams, you have points or stats that you want to go through, or do, do we need to, uh, I'm we not need sure to collect it for a few well, minutes and we, then we'll we come back? We may need to collect that a little bit. <laughs> the one thing I would notice is a uh, six-point differential, but uh, they, uh, they scored in the last second on both quarters, so that's four yeah, of those six points. Point. And free throw line, we'll have those stats added up as well, but I think a, a pretty sizable advantage there at the free throw line for – uh, for the Lady Hillbillies. We're going to take a little break here. We'll come back with about two or three minutes left in the first half. The Lady Hillbillies lead it 27-21 to 21 over the Lady Tigers in the regional championship ballgame. Let's face it, life's moving along at a faster pace these days, and every now and again you find that one stop that allows you to catch your breath. That one stop that reminds you of the good old-fashioned values. The one stop that hand dips their ice creams and makes hamburgers to die for. The one stop that can furnish you with propane and pizza and everything in between. And they usually call you by your name and ask you about your family. Well, that place in Prairie Grove is Frederick's One Stop. Serving Prairie Grove since 1975. They say, Go Tigers! Life can come at you from a lot of different directions, and you need to be prepared with the proper insurance. Let John Galligan of the Galligan Insurance Alliance make sure that you, your loved ones, and your home, and all that's near and dear to you is properly covered. You see, the Galligan Insurance Alliance is an independent insurance agent and allows him the flexibility to shop the very best policy at the very best price, and this gives you the coverage and the peace of mind that you need at the rate that fits your budget. It's the best case scenario when it comes to covering all that is near and dear to you. Check them out on Facebook or drop by the website GalliganInsuranceAlliance.com and you can always call 479-282-0605, 479-282-0605, the Galligan Insurance Alliance.
CarMart of Northwest Arkansas. Come on down and see why CarMart continues to earn the repeat business with so many customers. Looking for free checking that isn't free of extras? It's as easy as finding your nearest Arvest bank. Our free blue checking comes with lots of features, including free online and mobile banking, and the ability to deposit a check just by taking a picture of it with your smartphone. And since it's from Arvest, you'll have the freedom of more than 240 locations and 7 to 7 banking. You shouldn't have to pay for convenience. Switch to free blue checking from Arvest Bank. I wonder if Buck Lewis had any ideas to what he was starting when he sold his first Ford back in 1946. He was on the square in Fayetteville. Then Tom and Herb Lewis made the move to the current location on North College back in 1969. But through all those years, a Lewis has always been at the helm, and that tradition continues today. It's that kind of family value and heritage that makes Lewis Automotive the place to buy your next vehicle. Be it a Ford, Dodge, Chrysler, Ram, or Jeep, new or used, you can still find a Lewis standing behind every single deal. Award-winning service, six locations on over a thousand vehicles it's amazing a lot has changed but the lewis heritage and tradition continues lewis automotive proudly serving northwest arkansas since 1946. prairie grove all sports booster club represents our kids sporting events with k-12 like us on facebook and follow us at prairie grove tigers if you'd be interested in helping out the sports teams with a monetary donation please visit their website at pgboosterclub.com. Back here at the halftime break, we've got a couple minutes before the second half starts. Dr. Williams, you want to go through stats for us? Okay, if I've, if I've got the count right, I've got uh, Camry Bartholomew who's leading the Tigers with nine points at the half. I uh, had Taylor Harton with five, Matty Harton with six, and Sarah James Stone with one. Uh, and as far as foul trouble goes, it looks like uh, Ashley Cox, Taylor Harton, Parker Lopez all had two. And I had Matty Harton and Taylor Doss with one apiece. And Ashley Ashley with two, I think you. That's what yeah, I was I think guessing. Right. There's one. Okay. They put it on number three, <laughs> but number three wasn't on the court, and I assumed it was Ashley. Well, we're, hope, we're hoping uh, we don't come out here in the second half and see Parker, uh, her first foul that she commits being her fourth foul because they put her up with uh, three fouls there uh, when she wasn't on the court, like you said. So hopefully Parker and Ashley each have two and, and Parker doesn't have three. As expected with Ozark, uh, Kylie Ladd uh, has got 10 points and really played well the first half. Uh, doesn't have any fouls. Uh, followed up by Olivia Melton with six points. Uh, Cecilia Heffington with four. 
Brooklyn Ree with three, Lexi McClellan with two, and Hannah Ladd with two as well. Uh, Hannah Ladd and Katie Schaefer uh, both have two fouls. Cecilia Heffington, Lexi Mc McClellan, Brooklyn Ree, and L Olivia Melton I have with one. I think that's right, according to us anyway, right? That's right. <laughs> Ozark 10 out of 13 at the free throw line in the first half. The Lady Tigers shooting a good percentage as well, uh, but haven't got to the line as many times. Six out of eight for the Lady Tigers uh, in the first half. But I think the key difference, Dr. Williams, you and I were talking about it at the break, were the, the offensive rebounds. And uh, I think it was Berryville at the district tournament, really in the first half, they scored a lot of points off of offensive rebounds, if I remember correctly. And Ozark got quite a few second chance points against us there in the first half as well. They did, and uh, they got a got a foul after they'd gotten an offensive rebound, scored two points with, uh, I think, .2 seconds left in the yeah. first quarter, and then had a tip in with a second left in the second quarter for four of those six points that they're leading by. Well, I would expect that that would get corrected at the halftime break, at least uh, from what we've seen in the past. I think we'll come out, and even though we are undersized, uh, a lot of times it's just about position, and it's about want to down there underneath the basket. I think our girls will come out and, uh, and definitely hit the boards a lot harder. We've done a pretty good job offensive rebounding-wise, just haven't got a lot of stick backs there. We had some tough matchups. I yeah. think they're bigger than us at all five positions on yeah, the court right, right now. But uh, we've, we've played that way before and come out ahead. Well, the Lady Hillbillies start off with a three ball in the corner. No good, but Melton gets that offensive rebound there, and she spin, spins. Boy, she's gotten some good touches, some good rolls down here on these – these Pottsville rims, that's eight points for Melton. That one looked like it just crawled over the yeah, rim and it fell did. in for Well, the biggest lead of the game for Ozark, if I remember correctly, eight-point lead here. There's Parker Lopez, three ball from the corner, yeah. bottom. <laughs> there you go, oh. Lynn. When I found out that was not a trademarked comment yeah. there, at least I don't think it's trademark. I had to give you one bottom tonight. And there's Parker Lopez with her first basket of the ball game, so – that was a much needed one right there. And I'm not sure who called that timeout, Dr. Williams. Did you see if that was that was us or them? I was trying to keep track of the timeouts, but it was quickly called right after the, the I, shot I went in. I didn't notice that either. Okay. It, a, it almost had to be Coach Froud with the referees being right down here after the basket went in. That was a big three to get us back within five points. Sure was. Well, the Lady Hillbillies, Lady Tigers pressing a little bit here. Now the double team is set. Ozark throws it over. Now Melton's got it in the corner. That one's too strong. Good rebound that time. Lady Tigers had two players in position. Taylor Harton gets the ball for the Lady Tigers. Seven minutes to play in the third quarter. The lead is five. Well, I haven't seen Parker hit a three. You know, she doesn't shoot many threes, really, but that was good to see. That left her open over there. And she hesitated for a minute and then did a great job of knocking it down. There's Ashley Cox on the baseline. It's no good. Ladd with the rebound for the Lady Hillbillies. And you know, Ozarks look to run a little bit tonight more than I thought they would. There's a turnaround jumper off the backboard for Heffington. She's got six points. Ozark lead is up to seven. Camry, a little stutter move right there, and she pulls it back. Now Lopez going to the left side. You're, you're right, Dr. Williams. Ozark looks like a better defensive team this year than we saw last year. And Ashley's going to be pushed out of bounds there. They're going to call the foul. I believe they're going to get Kylie Ladd. I believe so. It'll be her first. Like to say hello to Coach Froud's sister who's watching in Bentonville. We hope we can pull pull a win out tonight. Lopez goes to the left side. She's going to be fouled before the shot is taken. I know we've got a lot of folks uh, in town, Dr. Williams, with uh, I think the Pee Wee basketball tournaments all started this week as well. So I think we got a lot of people spread out. Lopez driving it inside. A little bit too strong, but Ozark can't control the rebound, and we're going to get a, another opportunity right here. A 
Lopez going to give it another run there. She crosses back over to the left side and it's knocked out of bounds again. Well, even with their size differential, we're taking it right to the hole and trying to trying to make them either foul us or get the, get the easy bucket. Here she goes again. Now this time she kicks it back out. The scramble for the ball. Bartholomew comes away with, with it for the Lady Tigers. And now Ladd is going to be whistled for her second foul. So she played the entire first half without committing a foul. She's picked up two in about the last 30 seconds of play. Well, how many inbounds plays have we had to run right here <laughs> on this possession? Four or five, I think. There's Lopez going in again. Can't get it. Nice rebound by Ashley Cox. She goes oh, up and gets the and one. Well, we were bound to score right there as many chances as we had at the basket, and a great job by Ashley getting the offensive rebound. Coach Nagel for <laughs> Ozark, not real happy. I'm not, I'm not really sure why either, Doctor. I think maybe the, the last foul on Ladd he thought was a clean steal. And I didn't it's, get, uh, was the foul, uh, that last foul they called, uh, did you get who that I was? Did, I did not. Let's I would, see if they put it up. There it is. Number one. Schaefer, that, if that's on Schaefer, it'll be her third foul. And already, Dr. Williams, uh, the Lady Hillbillies with four fouls in the first two and a half minutes of play. We just keep forcing the ball inside. Parker took the one three-pointer, but at everything else, we've been pushing to the inside. Yep. And Parker, that, that three that she took, she almost had to because she was so open there. Well, Ashley at the free throw line for her first trip tonight. She's got four points and five with the free throw there. So nice job by Ashley. The lead's back down to four with 5.20 to play in the third quarter. Nice job by Bartholomew staying in front of Ladd there. That's a tough job. Now they get it inside to Heffington. She kicks it back out to 14. Nice Reed, box no, out. Really right. good block. Oh, nice pass from Taylor to Maddie yeah. with the basket there. And there's that transition offense that we haven't seen a whole lot of, but maybe we'll get us going there. That was one of those team rebounds that we had everybody boxed out, and the ball hits the floor, and Taylor picks it up and uh, get the basket and transition. I think they called that on Maddie. If so, that's her. Yeah, Maddie Harton with her second foul. The lead is cut down to two. Ladd drives it inside. No good. Another defensive rebound this time by Maddie Harton, and Lady Tigers on the move again. Well, the biggest lead of the ball game, I believe, was eight points for Ozark, and now Lady Tigers with a chance to take the lead on the three. Oh Good. Maddie Harton with her third three of the ball game. Oh, excuse me, first three of the ball game, and that's nine points for her. The Lady Tigers have their first lead of the ball game. About a minute and a half ago, we were down seven. We've come back with eight straight points. Yeah, I take that back. I think we were up three to two, weren't we, at the very beginning of the game? <laughs> it's been so long ago. We'll take it no matter what. Four minutes to play in the third quarter. It's been a while if we have had the lead there. Ladd drives it inside again. She's going to be fouled before the shot. They call that one on Camry. I think that's her first foul. Is that right? Yeah, it is her first foul. Ladd has got decent size for a guard, but she's just very strong with the ball and her ball handling, very, very tough to handle. There's Ladd from the wing on the left side, and she got it to go for her second three-point basket of the ball game. Actually, I think that's her first three-pointer of the game. 13 points for Ladd. Yes. The Lady Hillbillies back up to a two-point lead. 3.25 to play in the third quarter.
Lopez kicks it out to Maddie on the left side, and she got another one to go. Boy, she's heating up. Back-to-back -back three point baskets by Maddie Harton, Dr. Williams. She's got eight points this quarter alone. Back to a one point lead for the Lady Tigers. Now a step back three from Ladd, no good. Taylor with position. And the referees are gonna flip a coin here. Who gets it? I think Ozark's gonna get it there. Taylor had position on the defensive rebound, just couldn't quite come up with it. McClellan's got it at the top. She spins back to the lane. Floater goes, no good. Rebound Bartholomew, and Lady Tiger's going to slow things down and play with the lead. Boy, they're giving Maddie a lot of space. Now she drives it inside to the left side. No good, oh, knocked wow. away. Hannah Ladd comes away with the rebound for Ozark. Little contact there, but good defense. Boy, Ladd thought about it. Now she pulls up for a 20-footer, and it's good. 15 points on the night for Ladd. Gives Ozark the lead. Back and forth we go. One minute and 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. Ozark leads it by one. Now the Lady Tigers coming back to run motion offense. Here's the same set they just run. This time Maddie keeps it. Tries to get it to go. No good. Melton with the rebound for Ozark. Coach Froud looking for a foul there. She went in for the layup but didn't get a call. Yeah, we really are attacking them. Now the younger lad pulls up from deep three-point land, and she's got her first field goal of the ball game. Ozark pushes it back up to a four-point lead. Both teams kind of heating up from the outside in this third quarter. Lopez has it on the wing for the Lady Tigers. One minute and five seconds to play in the quarter. Taylor Harton now with the ball on the wing. Now Coach Frow going to back it out, maybe change sets here. Now under a minute to play in the quarter. Now this is catch your breath time right here, it looks like. <laughs> Both teams, hands on hips. Some of them tugging at their shorts here. Now 35 seconds to play in the quarter. Coach Froud setting the offense and Coach Nagel talking defense. <laughs> Chess match is on, right? 20 seconds to play in the quarter. I think Maddie's going to try to make something happen off the dribble, I would think, here. Now with 12 seconds to go. Nine seconds left. Maddie starts to make her move. She's double teamed there, throws it up from deep outside. No good. Ball's knocked out of bounds. I think Ozark student section right there kind of played a trick on us there as they were starting the countdown a little earlier than it was. So now with 2.9 seconds, here comes Ladd up the floor. She's going to get a desperation shot off. And, oh, they called oh, a foul. She's fouled there. Oh, no. Uh, Let's see if he's going to – maybe not. Maybe he's – Come on, wave it off. Wave it off. Wave it off. Wave it off. I think he's going to wave it off. Looks like, well, I thought there for a minute Ozark was potentially going to score at the end of all three quarters That's if right. they would have got free throws right there. So a big no call right there. Well, that was uh, quite a quarter. We were down six coming into the third quarter, and uh, they had gotten up as much as eight, I believe, at one yep. time. Yep. Uh, and I know they were up seven, and within about a minute and a half, we came back and got ahead one and gone back and forth, and now we're behind by four. Uh, I wonder how many games Ozark uh, – I know in this league they went undefeated. I wonder how many close games they've had to play in the fourth quarter and if that will come into play as we yeah. go down to the end here. That's a good point. We, we were tested uh, against Ozark, or excuse me, against Huntsville all three times really all we three played times. them, right? And then Berryville uh, played some close games with them as well. So 
Yeah, you're right. You never know how a team is going to respond to a pressure situation. And that could come into play here. The team foul situation we've got is uh, Ozark's got four fouls. They committed those four fouls, uh, and they played with four fouls for the last five and a half minutes there. They did not foul again. The Lady Tigers also doing a nice job in the third quarter. We've only got two fouls, and we'll have the ball coming out. We did make up ground there in the fourth quarter. In the third quarter, outscored Ozark by two points. And you said it at the beginning of the name, game, Dr. Williams, a four-quarter game, and it looks like that's what we're going to have right here as the fourth quarter gets underway. Well, it doesn't get much better than this. Two really good teams playing tournament time, a lot of excitement in the gym. Regional championship on the line. Matty Harton there tries to drive it in and now backs it out. Now she goes in again to the lane, this time kicks it out to Lopez, who drives baseline. Well, they closed out on Maddie a little bit better. Lopez with another three from the sideline there, no good. Rebound goes to Schaefer for uh, the Lady Hillbillies. 7.20 to play in the ball game. As Ladd walks the ball up the floor for Ozark. Now Melton is out of the game for Ozark, but Heffington's back in. They just trade one big girl for another inside. There's Ladd from three, no good. Oh, great what a box rebound. out. Ashley Cox with a great rebound there. Ashley's Ball got to be getting tired. She's been fighting a, a big girl all night long. Yeah, she has. Played a, She got a little bit of rest in the first half when she picked up her second foul, but... She's been battling inside. That ball's thrown oh. away there. We couldn't control it there. Goes out of bounds back to Ozark. Maybe just a little miscommunication right there, Dr. Williams. We've been running that weave on the outside, and it looked like one player was ready to come to it, and the other player was anticipating something else, and unfortunate there. Just ball, ball just goes out, out of bounds there. Coach Froud is going to take another timeout. That's either two or three that Coach Froud has taken. If he's taken two, he's got three left. But I think he's actually taken three, so maybe with just two timeouts left in the ball game. Interesting, you know, the first half, they continued to call fouls all the way through, and you're right. <laughs> we we had some fouls early in the first two or three minutes, and then it's kind of settled, settled in. They've just been playing here for the last six or eight minutes. It's one of those, I don't know if the referees have adjusted to the game or the players have adjusted to the referees. Maybe a little bit of both there. A little there. bit and of that's both. Kind of how it should work, really. Uh, Maybe they're getting tired, too. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, Ozark shot 13 free throws in the first half. Did not shoot one in the third quarter. And we shot eight free throws in the first half and just shot one in the third quarter, so... Ozark's going to get the ball here against full court pressure from the Lady Tigers with 6.47 to play in the ball game. Kylie Ladd dribbles the ball up for Ozark. Now back out to Schaefer who hits the three. That's a big shot right there for Ozark. Eight points for, excuse me, that's, that's La Schaefer's first three-pointer of the game, first basket of the game by my count. The lead is back up to seven for Ozark. Taylor Harton in a little bit of trouble there, does a good job to get it to Camry. Looks like Ozark stepped up their defensive pressure a little bit on the perimeter. They are pushing it out on the perimeter. Let's see if... Uh You got to be careful with Ladd. Just anticipating those passing lanes there. Now Lopez going to challenge her on the baseline. Gets it out to Bartholomew for three. Oh, needed that one. Nice rebound by Cox. Going to be a jump ball there, and Ozark's going to get it on the alternate possession. Made a good offensive rebound there by Ashley Cox. I think, Dr. Williams, we're going to have to create some turnovers off of this press. We haven't. Ozark's got some good guards. We haven't really got those points that we're used to getting in a game. Wide open look there for McClellan in the corner, and she hits it. She hits it. They've had four different players hit threes yeah. this half. Yeah, they really have heated up from behind the arc. The biggest lead of the ball game now for Ozark. It's up to 10 with 5.20 to play in the ball game. Lopez driving to the left side, cut off by the younger lad. Now she's going to try it again on the left side. 
Comes all the way back now inside the lane. They're going to call a foul on Ozark. Lady Tigers will get the ball on the baseline. They get Schaefer, and that's her fourth foul, I believe. It looks like Parker's a little bit shaken up there on that play. That's the fifth team foul on Ozark, so the Lady Tigers still a couple of fouls away from being in that bonus. Schaefer's going to come out of the ball game, replaced by Brooklyn Ree, and now Taylor Doss is going to come into the ball game and replace Parker and give her a, a little breather there to let her get some attention over there on the sideline and maybe shake off that contact and get back into the game. Maddie Harton goes inside, ball's knocked away. Ozark comes yeah. away with it. A lot of contact in there on that play, but the ball came loose. Nozark got it. Now they're going to bring three guards out and play a little weave, it looks like. Now they get inside to Heffington. Turnaround jumper is good, and Ozark with now a 12-point lead with 4.40 to play. The Lady Tigers really need points right here. Well, we've attacked the basket all night. Now that here comes Taylor inside. She's going to be fouled. They're going to call it on the floor. That's the third foul on Kylie Ladd. As Heffington will now check into the ball game. And, you know, it looks like Ozark has kind of matched up with our, with our size disadvantage. They haven't played Heffington and Melton a whole lot together. There's a nice inbounds play yes. for the Lady Tigers. Big basket right there by Ashley Cox. They went to, took out one of the bigs and brought in a quicker player to help play on the perimeter, and, and it's paid off for them at this point. Well, the lead is down to 10. 4.15, still a lot of time left in the ball game, but we're going to need some stops and we're going to need some points. Lady, Lady Hillbilly's trying to run a little bit of clock right here. Just seems like every time we've tried to trap them also, they've made us pay for it, so we've got to be cautious of when we do that. Ozark just moving the ball around from side to side now, just content to run the clock. Well, they've got three or four that are good ball handlers, and they're, they're hard to trap. The one thing we can do here, Dr. Williams, is we've only got two team fouls, so we can be really aggressive here with our defense. Still a long way from putting Ozark into the bonus. Here comes the trap, and now they throw over the top of it. Now they just now throw it back out. they're definitely trying to use clock. Yeah. They're going to make us come out and foul. Yep. And we've got fouls to give. We might as well be as aggressive as we can. Maybe we get away with it. Down to 3.15 to play in the ball game. They probably run a minute, over a minute off oh the my. clock. <laughs> had a, had let, a body check out go there. Now, aren't they? now they're going to call a bump on the ball, but uh, – that screen off the over there was uh, that looked like a body check from hockey. Yes, it did. Second foul. Well, that, see, I thought they called that on Camry, but the scoreboard has it on Taylor. So if that's on Taylor Hart, and that's her third. Either the official score or I don't have <laughs> the right pair of glasses <laughs> you on. You and one. I both, and I've got contacts in, so. Well, Lag goes inside, and now that's going to be a charge. Great play by Ashley Cox drawing the charge right there. And that's what we needed right there. We needed to turn over some way, somehow. Ashley Cox did a great job of stepping in to get it. Two fifty-one to play in the ball game. Parker Lopez checks back into the game, so it looks like she's okay after being little bit shaken up there. Taylor Doss going to come out of the game. Now the Lady Tigers down by 10. We are in the bonus, so if Ozark fouls, we will be shooting free throws. Going to have to go pretty quickly here. Here's Lopez now to Taylor Harton. Gets it to Bartholomew. I think they're going to call a moving screen. I don't know on who, but yeah, they get Ashley Cox for the moving screen. That was a Good set play there, Ryan. It looked like Camry was going to be wide open for a three-point attempt. They call the moving screen, and now the Lady Tigers are going to have to pressure up here. That's not necessarily a bad foul there for Camry. That's see how many they put her down for. I've got her Just, for two. <laughs> okay. And that you 
you're in sync with the scoreboard then. They've also got her for two fouls. So 2.25 to play. Lady Tigers now with five fouls, now with six fouls. And so on the next foul, Ozark will be shooting a one and one free throws. Now the Lady Tigers trying to trap. She's just she's just tough to get a handle on there. And Melton pulls the ball back out for Ozark, going to try to run some more clock. 2.05 to play in the ball game. Lady Tigers trailing by 10, and now Ladd gets it over to Melton at the top of the key. I'm looking at somebody who you want to foul, Dr. Williams, but they haven't missed a whole lot of free throws tonight, so it's just kind of pick your poison there. Right. Taylor Harton fouled number 14. That's Brooklyn Ree. She hadn't shot any free throws tonight, so well, I guess we'll see, at least by my count. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's see what she's got here with 146 to play. It will be a one-and-one -one free throw for Ozark. First one's no good, and... So nice, nice foul there. Right. Lady Tigers get the ball back, and now Lopez pushes it quickly into the front court. Crossover move there, now gets it out to Maddie Hart, and we need that one. Bottom, got it. Boy, Maddie has played in a great second half offensively. I've got her with 15 points. Is that right, Dr. Williams? Well, I missed, I've missed, okay. <laughs> miscounted here somewhere, but I'm sure you're, you're closer to right than I am. We'll say approximately 15 <laughs> points. That was a huge shot there. Got the lead down to seven. Still a lot of time left in the ball game. A minute 34 to play. I'm missing three points somewhere, so okay. I'm, I'm going to assume those are Maddie's <laughs> points. Well, they have been the past few games anyway. Right. She's Well, the Lady Tigers now going to almost have to really pressure up on, on the full court and it's kind of been, uh, we've kind of pressured them, and once they've gotten the ball in bounds, it's kind of just been a straight-up man press defense. I would expect at some point we're going to run a, another player at the ball, and, boy, their guards have just done a good job of finding the open player when we've done that, and it's been hard to get any kind of turnover off the press tonight. Well, we'll, we'll probably try to keep them from inbounding the ball, but then foul pretty quickly, and, and we're going to need some possessions. Uh, it's kind of that time of the game. If Ozark hits their free throws, they're going to be awfully tough to beat at this yeah, point. Yeah. Well, we know that uh, Reed just missed her only free throw attempt. She's inbounding the ball right here, so probably a smart move for Ozark. Here comes the full court pressure defense. They do get the ball into Ladd, and now the trap's being tried to be set there. Taylor Doss knocks the ball away, and are they going to call foul there? Oh. They called the foul, and I, but I think that, that may be who we wanted to foul. Well, they called Taylor Doss for the foul, and yeah, that's right. That's 14 re again, and it's still a one and one free throw. Well, I think the only reason is she, she did miss her last one. She may be a very good free throw shooter overall, but from what we got to go on tonight, yeah. one of the <laughs> other ones have been hitting them all. <laughs> yeah, they have. Well, we, and we know she can hit a three-point shot. She hit one in the first half. She gets that free throw to go. The lead is back up to eight. A minute 27 to play in the ball game now. And she, she did get both of them to go, and now Ozark going to use their second time out of the ball game. So the lead's back up to nine. Still a three-possession game in the way we've played all year long. Uh, we, we've shot probably just as many threes as we have twos all year long and had pretty good success from the three-point line. So still a lot of game to be played here, but we're going to have to go quickly. And the way the state tournament bracket sets up, both of these teams are on the same side of the bracket. That's and, interesting, uh, isn't it? And could, could meet up again if, if they have some success at state. And again, Ozark will be hosting the state tournament, so you take a, a really solid team and put them on their home floor, they're going to be even that much tougher to beat uh, down at the state tournament. Camry Bartholomew now pushing the ball quickly into the front court, a minute 20 to play now. Here's Taylor Harton at the top of the key. You've got to think 
Lady Tigers looking for either an easy basket or a three-point shot. Bartholomew lets it go from the wing. A little bit short there, and Ladd gets the rebound for Ozark. She's triple team. Boy, she I went think. through the triple team there. My goodness. Uh, I think we tried to foul her. Yeah. Get the call, and then she, she broke through. My goodness. 17 points for her. Less than a minute to play. The lead's up to 11 now. Lopez driving it inside. Boy, they're just staying hooked up with us on the perimeter. Not getting any good looks right now. Ozark doing a good job defensively. And Taylor gets it out to Ashley. And Ashley pulls up from about 15 feet. No good. Nice rebound there by Lopez. Gets it to go. Lead is down to nine, but the clock is running. And now 25 seconds. And it looks like Ree is going to be fouled there with 23 seconds left to play in the ball game. Looks like Ozark's gonna gonna come away with the win here, Dr. Williams. Well, just getting a little too little time to catch up. You know, it was it was just back and forth there, and then they had uh, got a couple of steals. Uh, two people shot up, shot three pointers, and made yeah. them that hadn't hadn't hit them all night long, and kind of broke the game open. Well, Ree misses her second one, so she's three out of five at the line. 20 seconds left. Bartholomew back into the front court. Maddie Harton's going to drive it inside. Off the glass, she gets it to go. Fox still running with 10 seconds. And it looks like the Lady Tigers just going to back off here and let the clock run out. Ozark is going to win this one 52 to 44. The Lady Tigers are going to finish runners up in the regional tournament. Nothing to be ashamed of right there. Both teams will be heading to Ozark, hopefully later this week, and hopefully to play a lot more games if you're the Lady Tigers. Right. We're, we're scheduled to play Thursday at 1 o'clock. Uh, hopefully the weather won't cause any problems with that. I think the tournament actually starts on Wednesday. Okay. And there's a little call for some weather there, but uh, – it's been a great season for the Tigers so sure far, has. and I think we may have a game or two or three left in us. Well, I think they're going to have the trophy presentation. I think we will get a trophy here, runner-up for the regional tournament. And I think if the Huntsville folks were right, Dr. Williams, I think we will play Crossit uh, Thursday at 1 o'clock down in Ozark. Crossit was the four seed out of the south region. They're going to announce the regional tournament trophies here. The runner-ups go to the Prairie Grove Lady Tigers. Well, and like you say, certainly nothing to be ashamed of here. Ozark has an excellent team. Uh, I'd like to get another shot at them just because I think we do have a chance to, to beat them, but uh, they're an excellent team and will be a threat in the state tournament. Yeah, they, they do have a good inside-outside combination, but Dr. Williams, our girls played with them the entire way. I mean, it really didn't get away from us. They ended up winning by eight points, and I think this will be a game where Coach Frow can look at the film and definitely correct some things and learn some things and, and be better prepared to play them the next time we play, too. One thing I've noticed since coming to Prairie Grove is I'd hate to be, play Coach Proud a second time because he, he usually comes up with something that's going to hurt you and, and very rarely loses those second games. Well, the Lady Tigers will play Thursday at the state tournament. And if, if we are to win that game, do, do we go straight to Saturday or do we play back-to-back? -back? I want to no, say we play Friday. Is we would have right? to play Friday and okay. Saturday. So it would okay. be three straight days uh, trying to make it to the finals if you can do it. Well, the Lady Tigers going to come away with the regional championship runner-up tonight. They will represent the North region as the two seed at the state tournament in Ozark. Dr. Williams, for me, I had uh, Maddie Harton with 17 points to lead the way, and I think if you're okay with this, we'll go ahead and call her our player of the game uh, tonight. She really came out in the second half and was able to get us a lead, hitting, uh, let's see, she hit three or four three-pointers there in the third quarter and uh, really got us the lead, gave us an opportunity to win the game, even though we came up a little bit short. I think that's a good choice. Well, we're going to sign off here from Pottsville. Uh, we will be live broadcasting again Thursday. Somebody will.
uh, Thursday down at Ozark, weather permitting. And uh, we will see you again then. Thanks for tuning in tonight and watching Lady Tiger basketball from Pottsville, Arkansas. We're signing off. Thanks to our East Lab students again for helping.